place in 2004, so we've been here eight years. Uh, when we bought it, the buildings to this side, these listed buildings, were all derelict. This this is a listed building, and in fact, it was about 1720 this has been aged at, um, and was on the Buildings at Risk Register. So we took on the farm knowing that we've got loads of building work and loads of things to do. Taking it on, I was aware that, first of all, we didn't have a massive budget. We're not multimillionaires. Um, we wanted to do it as economically as possible, and that actually led us, really, to, to incorporate a lot of the sustainable and green um, projects in, in the building work. With the Peak Park in their Sustainable Development Fund, um, they advised me about different other projects I could, I could do to, to do it in a more sustainable uh, way. But so, so, for example, all the floorboards uh, is, is all reclaimed timber, uh, all the doors throughout the whole project were reclaimed, um, just various things as we go around. L lots of reclaimed building materials used throughout, throughout the build. The electricity bill, you'd be, you may be surprised to hear, is only about £2,000 a year here, which for a site this size with that, that much going on is very small. So I'm guessing a good proportion of our electricity we're just using directly from the wind turbine and never goes through our meter. But we're still paid for it. So we win in three ways. Um, in, in terms of finances, it's just over 60%. 61% of our electricity bill is this pays for in real money. And just remind me again, what, what would your average output be from that thing? 10,000 units, 10,000 10, kilowatt yeah. hours. Yeah. We have to manage how it, what times it comes on and so on. And we don't have electric showers, those kind of things, you know. So we've got to manage our electricity use. This means that we have, on a, on a nice windy day, we've got 110, 120, 125 amps of, of capacity. My experience of them was that I thought they looked rather graceful and beautiful. The people in the village didn't like them at first. After a couple of years, everyone said, oh, have you seen our wind, wind turbines? Mm, yeah. And it's very much the case with a lot of stuff, really. Yeah. Mm. Ch change is hard, because none of us like change, because it's different and it's unknown mm. and so on, and all those mm. other emotional things that, that go on when, when change happens. But then you just come to accept it, don't you? Mm. Um, and sometimes you come to accept it and like it. And this, this, this stuff that you've got under the ground, these are pipes, are they? There are two loops, and they go up. To where that guy's lying down is yeah. one, yeah. and then the other side of him is another one. And it's two loops, each of 200 metres. They're under the, under the gate. They come together under the gate here. Go under it through that black door there. He says, how are you going to heat all these, these barns? And I said, well, we're, we're a bit stuck, really. It's either a big caller gas cylinder. Uh, it's not going to happen with wood burners, because I'm not, I'm not going to be cutting down trees all day long. Um, or, or oil, which are all horrendously expensive, uh, don't fit in very well with the ethos of, of my idea of things and my... Me wanting to put us forward as a, as a, a sort of a bit of a, a beacon for sustainability in terms of development and change and farm diversification. Um, and he said, have you considered a ground source heat pump? That has saved us more than it cost us to install it over the five years it's been in. Uh, it's a fridge. It's just a really big fridge. You know that. You've, you've read about ground source heat pumps. They're absolutely brilliant. They're, I can't tell you how good they are. They're absolutely phenomenally good. Why anybody would put an oil-fired... I, I will never use oil. Or I will always want um, this. And if we went downsize and we moved to another place, that's what I'll put in. <laughs> absolutely, definitely. But you need land. You do, but you don't. You need land if you want to get the most efficient. We, we're, we are probably the most efficient ground sea source heat pump you, you'll see because we spread our pipes out further than they need to. We've done them in dust. We've... Um, we box this all in so it doesn't lose heat. There's loads of things we've done. We insulate the pipes more than maybe you should have done. So I can't remember what the ratio is, four point something or mm. other heat. He told us that we're running out, which is one of the most efficient ones that they've, they've fitted because of those reasons. Mm. But you can run it as coils in the ground. Mm. So you can, have, you can go down three metres and coil this round that way, and you can do that in a large garden. I've used a quarter of an acre for what's effectively three houses. Mm. So you can mm. divide that by three, roughly speaking. Mm. Mm. Yeah. You, know, you need a large garden. That's why why we fire. don't have more ground source heat pumps, I have no idea. Basically, we don't know about them. As soon as I didn't know about them, as I say, until what, five and a half years ago. Um, this top one is, the, is, the, is coming out of the machine. So the machine's taken all the energy out of the water by the time it comes out, and this can be down to minus eight. So often there's lumps of ice on here, but you'd see that more in the winter, funnily enough, than you would in the summer. Because in the winter, it's having to work harder to produce electricity. It's taking absolutely everything out of it. So we've just had some people left the barns this morning. And so this is still running, building up the, the, the temperature of our, our thermal store, which I'll talk about in a minute. 
So that's always freezing, freezing cold. And this is obviously coming from outside with the, the cold water is very, very cold. <laughs> so, but the difference is that could be plus eight, that'll be plus eight, and this can be minus eight. So that's 16 degrees, which it then compresses by three and a bit times through a, through a scroll compressor. That's all that goes around, it's just car antifreeze. That's what's in the pipes that go out in the ground, because it can go out at minus eight. They can't put water in it, because it'll just be ice from there, obviously. I'll put, it, I'll put it this way, for every 4,000 kilowatts of heat in my radiators and hot water in these barns in the classroom, yeah. I have to pay for 1,000 watts of electricity. Oh, I see. Well, so, and the other 3,000 watts comes from the heat in the ground. I see. The ground source heat pump has been amazing um, in terms of the money. The rainwater harvesting, which feeds all the toilets on site, and our houses on it, and our campsites on it, so that's a, and that's a lot of water use, and it's all just water that would just be running down the fields and that away. And that saves us nearly £400 a year. And the peat park paid for that in entirety, for, the, for that to be installed for us. Mm -hmm. See, I'm uh, not used to jumping up as one of them should be. So we've got about three foot down at the moment, so it's about there at the moment. And just let out, you, you probably, you might have seen there, but a whole load of stuff came. Yeah. It smells beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> and I just do that every month or so, or a couple of months, and that's just to catch, so that I don't fill this full of silt. There will, there will be some goes in there, but not. Yeah, People talk is. very, um, <coughs> I don't know, very, very grandiose about what a ground source heat pump and having a wind turbine and doing what rainwater harvesting is like. Uh, I mean, that's something that anyone can do. If, you, if you've got a damp pipe, if you've got a, a roof at the back of your house where you could mount a tank above your downstairs toilet, you could save yourself 100, 100 odd pounds a year just by putting a water butt on it and putting a very simple bit of plumbing system in. Uh, mm. That's achievable for anyone, really. <laughs>